How are y'all? Just mixing a tiny bit of purple into this casting resin. We're pouring it really, really thick, and I want just a tiny bit of a hue. I put translucent. It matches. I have all our other a bunch of trans colors over in this because I'm going to have light coming through it. It's a weird backlit casting piece. Where are you guys watching from this morning and welcome. Thank you for joining our channel. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. We're gonna do two projects today. I'm gonna start out just by pouring this out on here. This is four and a half gallons of our casting resin. Now, ooh, I make a little mess there almost. Um, this is unique what I did here. It might be hard for you guys to see the big fractures. I poured this on top of plastic that I'd stretched and kind of actually even torched it to make big wrinkles. And then we poured a bunch of resin on top of it and I let the wrinkles kind of come through and protrude through the resin and then I peeled that plastic off so that um, all the color and stuff would come out to leave these voids and now I'm pouring clear. I'll do a few colors but I want to do something that we can put backlighting on and cast light through and you see big crisp fractures and I don't know, something pretty. So I'm going to let this settle and we'll go over and work on our countertop piece before we come back and mess with this and we are so that's our casting and that's just a big pretty frame I got from Hobby Lobby. We have our charcoal right here. I'm gonna, we're gonna do a countertop pour here. We're finishing out a few desks. These are just done right over doors. This is a hollow core door. Um, really good samples, but and you can make nice little tables and desks out of them. Lightweight, really sturdy with a layer of epoxy on it. How are you guys today? Hope you guys are blessed. If you have questions, please ask them. Jeanette says, hey y'all, happy Monday. Hey Jeanette, good to see you Jeanette. Remember this is your guys' channel. Let me see, you know I think I'm gonna, I better just find my roller really quick. Do you know what, I better grab a roller. Oh no, not a big deal at all. Oh no, there ain't no failure, man. How you guys doing? Thank you for being patient with me, people. The workshop, we have an awesome Florida workshop coming up. Let me know if you're gonna join, plan on joining us. The Florida workshop is an actual on-site class where you guys are gonna be able to go work on an actual job. It's gonna be a lot of fun with me. I don't know if the part, I don't know if working with me is a good part. It is. But you get to work. <laughs> but we're going to be doing a pretty high end kind of crazy floor where we're going to pull out all the stops, show you guys all the options. This right here is a countertop product. So, I like to go over processes with people. Um, and we have a very awesome, in my opinion, workshop where we cover a lot of um, techniques that really take away your need to be an amazing artist or anything. And it takes away a lot of people's fear of the process. Because that's generally, people are just afraid if they haven't done anything like this. And I understand it. We just show you how to be really, um, really simplify the job and get organized. And man, you can do some amazing jobs. Uh, where in Florida? Um, it is gonna be, what is the name? What's the name of the? Hey, since I don't know Florida, it's just north of Miami. Let me see. What's the name of the town in Florida where the classes are? Vero Beach, Vero Beach Florida. Vero Beach, Florida. I'm sorry, guys. That was a mess up of me to not remember the name of the town exactly. Vero Beach, Florida. The, so I definitely hope to see you guys out there. It's going to be very hands-on. I'll be feeding you guys and working with you guys, showing you how to grind concrete, fix fractures, seal a slab, deal with moisture. We go over even a lot of stuff that's not even on the job site. So it's definitely one of the most hands-on, inclusive flooring workshops you could ever take. So. When is it? Um, when is that workshop, Anna? End of February. It's the end of February. It's like the 25th, 27th. So I'll get you guys all that information. I'm so sorry that I did not memorize that before I started playing with the epoxy.
What date's the class, please? Um, February what is that? 26th to the 29th. Yeah, February 26th to 29th in Vero Beach, Florida. So I apologize, I did not have that in front of me. I need to have a little cheat sheet board in the classroom. Because I, I do not remember those little details sometimes. How do you do a wood grain look? A wood grain look? If you guys want me to, I'll show you how to do a little bit of a wood grain look right here. We can at least start it out like that, right? I don't think that hurt anything. I'll start pushing, working this pile back towards you. We have a lot of excess on this side, but we mixed the proper amount for the countertop, so we don't want to waste a bunch and leave it over here because it means we need it over there somewhere. I usually run about 15 square feet per gallon. That's kind of my average. And if you do something similar to that, keep it a little bit heavier than 20 square feet per gallon, it'll really help you have everything self-level on its own. You shouldn't get little fish eyes. It just becomes a really easy to work, forgiving process. This is one of the most amazing thick three-dimensional resins you could ever work with. So. So let us know if you plan on being at a workshop. And the link's in the bio, I think, to find the workshops. All of our workshops are listed there. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. A lot of powder in this mix here. This is the um, Black Label by Countertop Epoxy. It's our main Countertop Epoxy resin. There we are. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of a wood grain look for y'all. So. Do you apply a lot of pressure or light pressure when you're rolling? Very light pressure. If I was ever gonna have to apply more pressure, usually what I'll do is I'll just slow that roller down a little bit. So usually if you need too much pressure, you really should just slow the roller down. be a little bit what kind of lines but I want this to be random and messy right now this is not a finished look it's just getting started for your guys's wood grain look you were looking to get old soul 33 says I've been playing with some art projects with epoxy I was just getting ready to start again old soul thanks for joining our live I hope we were helpful to you Always let us know if you have any questions, and thanks for joining our channel. Thanks for all the love, guys. Sherry says, I love that color. Oh, I love this color, too. Phoenix is wondering what color that is. Um, what color is this? Which, the, which, of these, which of the greens is this? The darker one is going to be the evergreen on the website, and then the, the light one is just a trans green. Just a oh, just evergreen and trans green. That's, I did not, that's such a heavily pigmented trans green. Love okay. it. No, I love it. And no, it does look good, yeah. And I love the fact that we got a little bit of gray. The reason being is we have a bunch of metallics down here and you'll never get the same look if you just do all metallics, metallic on metallic or trans, translucent on translucent or, or um, opaque on opaque colors. But when you get that mix of the two different, you know, the metallic um, liquid pigments on metallic pigments, it just marbles and does some stuff that you can never do any other way. Gotta try to trust this process, guys. I hope I didn't. Did I have accident? No, I don't think so. I, don't think you got I hope me. I didn't. Get That's close awesome. to you. I was trying to like make sure I got here and then I realized I was. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm making messes in here with me. Um, how long does this take to cure? Um, I usually just say overnight, but say 12 hours, even if you did this at night, the next morning you'd be able to touch it. And the black. The black's just so amazing because it's gonna give this depth. Anywhere you see it. Okay. Probably shouldn't do this because it's just a mess, but I don't KP know where Tumblers, I'm Kim sent a bracelet. KP Tumblers, love you. Hope you guys are having a good day. Kim, I hope you're specifically having a good day. And thanks for the gift. There's 
so many badass people we, we get to meet and see here every day. Okay, no, I don't usually use my fingers. Well, depending on what we're talking about, but not with this, guys. I like to use this wood graining tool that I made of a cut of putty knife, but I didn't really think about wood graining until one of you guys asked about wood graining. So we'll just see how close I can get with my hands. I want to make sure I start by off one end all the way off the other end so that these, I'm really just trying to create striations in the color here. So kind of trying to stripe all the different grains and blacks together, but I want them somewhat random. And I don't want to show a little U-turn or turn around at the end. I want to make sure each one of these passes goes off the end. That's like a wood grain would. What is the curing temperature range? The curing temperature range, I, you know, I usually say 70 is just a bare minimum for mixing epoxy just because, you know, you, even if it's cold outside, throw a heater in there. So that's kind of what I say, but a lot of times I'll even go all the way up to, you know, up 85, 90 degrees in the room I'm curing. Let's kind of just spray a little bit of gold down here too. This is 99% isopropyl mixed with our mica powder. And I have gold in here now. And I meant to spray some on here. I just love that as a one of the grain colors when we do this, so. I'm gonna kinda go back over some of this down here. Oh yeah, that's, that's gonna add so much of a difference in there. Some of the sprayed metallics. It'll give you such a nice, fun wood grain look. We, you know, it looks ugly usually at first, and then it slowly self-levels and settles back in to the little grooves you leave. And, yeah, and I apologize. Hopefully you guys aren't grossed out watching my fingers get wet. Licks Rocks says, good to know I keep my house at 66. Licks Rocks? That's good to know <laughs> you lick rocks. No, like, it's so good to hear you. I, I loved rocks when I was a kid. So. <laughs> I love that. I can't even say that or I'll get my channel pulled. So there's a comedian creative. that talks about rocks. Yes. Um, Valerie says, I used to do tumblers, but my next project will be a table or a countertop. Valerie, I look forward to seeing what you do. Come to a class if you want to, too. We'll really help you out. So let me know if you guys, who out there plans on joining us in Florida. And we, ha we have one the month after, most likely, in North Carolina and Texas. North Carolina, Texas, and Florida. Those are our just upcoming passing, road classes. Just passing through says sweet wood grain tool. I know, isn't that the best wood grain tool? What if that's what God used? You, you know, it kind of is what God used. Just not my hands as own. But your mom's like my wood grain tool. Uh, Christina says, workshop is during my birthday again. This is Ooh. You should come, Christina, birthday in Florida. You look like a birthday girl. You know what? Honestly, Christina, if you call, um, they will give you um, the discount as a secondary person so you can get the $200 discount if you want to, if you're coming for your birthday. Um, where in Florida is it? What did we just say? Vero Beach. Vero Beach, Florida, <laughs> on the 26th to the 29th of February. Vero Beach, Florida. Okay, now that I'm done. Totally shooting a dirty porn here with my epoxy piece. Oh my. I, always, I always get so weirded out when people get their hands in it too much, but I guess I just didn't have options there. Um, why is this not running off the edges? Um, we have really good surface tension in this product, and that's something we'll go over a lot in class with you and teach you guys a lot about. Some surface tension, timing, how you mix it, which product you mix. That all has so much to do. Um, with the success of your project. Now, never do what I do, guys. You should really slowly just torch this like a boring, boring person that doesn't like fire. Um, but if you do have some 99% isopropyl on hand, um, make sure you don't spray it like I did, just because it works amazingly. That popping air bubbles, warming up the epoxy and helping it self-level, but don't do this. It's way too fun and way too dangerous. It'll make your kids want to be like me. What? Epoxy in home, send a heart. Epoxy in home? Love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, and then Living Aloha said, I joined late. What colors did you use? Um, this was a charcoal base. We had a regular um, trans grain. And what, what was our other grain? Um, uh, 
we had evergreen, transgreen, um, a black glitter, a gray, um, and a black um, liquid pigment. And holy crap, that actually really is really good. You're the best with the colors. That's, that's a really good job. Look at that. Um, how long does this take? Um, this probably, I mean, I was doing it slow for you guys and with you guys, and this probably took me, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? You know what? Let me see if I need a little more. I feel like I slightly over-torched. Sherry That's is wondering, um, she wants to do this to her basement floor, so how would this work? Um, basement floor? It would be amazing. You could call us and we'd do it for you, or show up to a class for sure, because while you definitely could do this, there's a few intricacies you might want to learn before just throwing this down on your floor if you're trying to do a wood grain pattern. But the classes go over all of that. So come to the Vero Beach um, class and you'll be learning more than you'll ever imagine. And guys, I'm going to spray a little bit of trans purple and a little bit of gold. I'll show you what trans colors do on this. Um, where are we located? We are in Grand Junction, Colorado. and. Okay, yeah, that's, I like that. That's a, good, that's a good option, right? So there's the color, and then what else is in that spray bottle? This is 99% um, isopropyl alcohol mixed with our mica powders. So, so we just take about 20, 25 grams and mix it in with about a half a quart of alcohol. And we'll just kind of verify, you know, let that vary back and forth depending on what we're trying to do. Sometimes you want more concentrated products, sometimes you don't. Her meat. What'd your boyfriend yell at you for? Have your boyfriend and you come out to a class of mine. We'll have fun. We'll make mistakes together. <laughs> Hello from Texas. Hello from the Netherlands. Texas, Netherlands. You know what? I'm jealous of the Netherlands. I want to go overlanding over there. That was on my road trip through Sweden in there. That was one big thing I looked back and was sorry for that I didn't make it up to the Netherlands. Um, how much for this sample? This sample, all you have to do is donate um, to your local backpack program and pay for shipping if you want these things. Um, and um, a lot of we have a couple other um, charities on our website you can donate to as well. And you can donate directly to them um, or through us, whatever works best. But yeah, we don't really sell the samples out of the classroom. Um, we just do that to raise funds towards projects we believe in. The backpack program's kind of become one of my passions. There's a lot of kids that don't eat from like Friday to Monday, so we supposedly live in the greatest country on earth and we don't feed our kids, so if you, if you want to see the backpack program, it's kind of a fun, fun way to get involved in your local community and feed kids that are right next door to you. When are we coming to Las Vegas? Las Vegas, you know, I don't have any plans for going to Las Vegas, but fly up to our Grand Junction, Colorado, or come out to Florida. So. I don't know why, but Vegas, I'm not a city boy. I am definitely not a city boy, to say the least. Vegas is a tough city for me to survive in. Brenda's asking, can you put epoxy on tile countertops? Epoxy on tile countertops. It's very easily done with the right epoxy, which is exactly what we're using right here, and the correct method. So remember, like, make sure your method doesn't fail you or your product. So. And remember, a tiny bit of education can save you a ton, tons of money later. So, can't wait to see you in a class. Oh, that is turning out, guys. Now that I fingered it all a second time. Now I'm going to try to torch it out without. Um, there it is. I was wondering where it was. Now I'm going to try to torch this out. I'm not going to light it on fire like I did last time. So, I just want this to settle really nicely. Let's start out over by you guys. Pop these air bubbles, help it self level. But I want a really crisp pattern in there. Be as patient as you need to be. It seems like it's not doing anything, but once you torch it and warm it up correctly, just keep that torch really direct, but keep it moving. Just slowly but surely behind that torch, you just see it start leveling out and turn it into a sheet of glass. You just got to give it that time. No, um, once I get it leveled with a torch, it should stay just like that. That's one reason I prefer a torch too. So. What is the base? 
the base. This is over a hollow core door, and we'd poured it a few times before, just different weird patterns and whatnot. And now we're actually wanting to make a desk, and since we actually have those extra layers of epoxy, this is so dang sturdy. It feels almost like a concrete desk. Very, very solid, but it's still somewhat lightweight. Makes a really nice desktop. We had somebody that needed one, so I figured I'd try to make a pretty one for him here. Oh, is that Mardi Gras? I did not know that, guys. I've been to, been to Louisiana, I've never been to Mardi Gras. Can you put epoxy on a ceiling? Epoxy on a ceiling? Definitely. You'd want to use our wall epoxy and just come to a class. We actually apply that in almost every class we go over wall epoxy. It's just a vertical, non-sag epoxy, very decorative. You can use it almost like a Venetian plaster or something, but in wet areas. And we're constantly learning here and trying to pass on everything we learn to you guys. KWIF 81 says they're doing the garage floor this spring and they can't wait. They say their shell is going to look good to the shop. Hell yeah, I can't wait to see that. I look forward to seeing your garage floor, man. Come by a class if you want to. We're going to be doing some pretty crazy garage floor action in Florida. Chile, Netherlands, thank you guys, South Carolina, We've got people from all over the place. Thank you for joining our channel. What do you guys want to see the most? I'm about to go do our casting piece, but what is it that would make this channel more valuable to you guys? And if you could have a class, we do have a class coming up in Florida, but if you wanted to, um, other than our Florida class, would you want me to go to North Carolina, Texas, or California next? Texas. North Carolina or California. And you can always hit, say Florida if you're interested in that. We're just trying to figure out where exactly. We have a huge need out there, we believe, and trying to make sure we're in the right spots. Oh, I'm loving this, guys. This is really coming together. I don't know. Maybe it's not the most realistic colors in a wood grain, but I think that's a good wood grain. So. Did you say this is on a hollow door? This is a hollow core door, yes. Now, to finish this off, guys, if you notice, there's going to be a couple tiny little air bubbles still popping to the surface while this slowly cures. And one thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray this whole piece down heavy with a layer of alcohol. But I only do this when I know I'm absolutely not going to be torching it anymore. Of course, we don't want to have a fire this big as much as I pretend I like fire. Now, what this will do is this will really help pop any little air bubbles that keep coming to the top while I'm working on my next project over here the other way. Um, it'll really help break any little surface tension divots too because I'm spraying this on really heavy and it should really leave a very smooth surface. Have you ever left a bunch of bubbles on purpose for a design? Um, I have left bubbles, but um, I didn't really like what the results were. But one thing I did um, that I did like the results of is I've sprayed water down on a surface if I want to really make it look like a bubble. And then I can actually use um, spray paints or, or an airbrush and airbrush from an angle and you can get a really nice water droplet effect that looks just like a water drop and then you pour straight over it and then it's smooth it looks like a three-dimensional water droplet without the problems of it we have a lot of people saying north carolina we got an idaho and a michigan idaho north carolina michigan huh? more california a lot of massachusetts uh, trying to Trying to do our casting piece here. We do. We have a lot of information on our website, and we have a YouTube channel too, a really good YouTube channel. Thank you guys for joining our live here today. Ah, watch me fail with a spray, spray bottle here. It's like my first relationship. There we are. I'll just unscrew that here. Now I'm spraying this into a clear, guys. Um, it's really fun to accent into clears, but just remember. Um, you're not gonna hide any of this down underneath the surface. So whatever you have here is what you get. So you see that I poured uh, four and a half gallons of clear on top of um, a first about four gallons of clear um, that had already cured. And I'm trying to get a layered effect that we're gonna have backlighting on. But like I say, you wanna be very cognizant of the fact that you can't really go backwards here. 
because once you're pouring into a clear, everything, every t tiny little drop is gonna forever be exposed, so. Can you put LEDs behind any of them and make them glow? Yeah, as long as you left it, poured it clear enough, you could definitely do LEDs in anything. That's kind of what I plan on doing here. I'm gonna kind of melt this out, proud of the wall. Biker Craig says they watched you Friday creating the, the frame, so it's nice to see the Biker person. Craig, it's good to have you back, man. Mostly just want like a little bit of three-dimensional color kind of spread out from the center here. I want it really nicely marbled too. I don't, you almost can't tell, but here in person, holy cow, it's so beautifully um, layered on here. I'm gonna grab a translucent gold. Maybe a translucent blue, that's always a good one. The violet is never wrong. That's kind of what I have in the base color there is a little bit of translucent violet. Um, and of course, I always love the blues and turquoises. So I think the colors will look good coming through all those different colors. So well, what colors did you mix with the alcohol that you're spraying now? Um, we have a um, Caribbean right here. That's a Caribbean on there. We have our, I believe this is just our light blue. How did you seal the back of the frame? I actually taped using foil tape, um, heavy gauge plastic to the whole back and just tried to make sure it was really well sealed. Eh? Pray that it's sealed well. Oh. Levy, levy. See me over here do struggling. You offer classes on applying the product? We do. We have classes all over the place. So let us know where um, our next cl upcoming class in Florida is going to be a really fun workshop. Um, and I hope to join and see some of you out there. That's the very next one. We have one here at the beginning of the Yeah. Do we have one here? I don't think. I don't know if we have one here. It's online. Yeah, it might have been canceled. I'm not sure. I don't think. I'm not sure. Maybe we do have one. Okay. Just want a little bit more of this blue. I don't know if you guys can tell how three-dimensional it really is, but it's kind of crazy in person. I'm trying to get a little bit of gold. Where in Florida? The name I never remember Vero once. Beach. Vero Beach, Florida. <laughs> it's the impossible to remember um, down to me only. Do you have any classes coming up in Texas? Um, probably in about one and a half months we'll be in Texas, but we have not scheduled our exact location. We're looking at a place in Dallas, but right now we don't have a classroom. So the classroom we thought we'd had is we want to have a little bigger job nearby because I like to be really valuable to our people because all of our remote classes, we're going to try to have as much real, true hands-on as possible. Sherry sent a heart. Sherry, thanks for your love. We love you all, too. Any classes in New York? Um, we don't, but if you're in New York, just come on down to one of the nicer, warmer areas and come to any class you want to. Um, where is our clear alcohol? Okay. So now this is something I do with a lot of just the casting pieces is instead of a torch, I'll only spray alcohol and casting because with casting resin, kind of temperature is your enemy. So keeping it nice and cool is the only way to make this exotherm really properly. Never flash cure, never wrinkle, warp. Um, the cooler it stays, you'll never get any odd warping later with your photo. So I don't know if you can see just how, or photo, the picture, whatever, the picture frame. I don't know if you can see, but just spraying this with alcohol, it's laid this piece down absolutely flat like glass. And I'm most likely going to spray it, pour another four and a half gallons on this. So at about 10 pounds per gallon, this, it'll be kind of fun. We'll have 15, 20 gallons. So this will be a 200 pound picture by the time it's done, but it should be very thick and hopefully just beautifully three-dimensional. Creative Clutter Art sent a heart. Thank you, Creative Clutter Art. 
Oh, look at how red is actually. I'm liking that. I wasn't sure what to do with that red, but I'm liking that more than I thought. I don't think that's a bad color in there. What do you think? Sherry said two fires, three fire four. Thank you for the fire, Thank Sherry. Yep. I can't believe how sweet some of y'all are. I know I say that, but like, I saw, I've seen lives before, but I don't, I don't watch lives a lot. I'm kind of a boring dude, but i would be like, wow, what the heck are these people sending all that love for? So I hope I'm somehow useful to you guys. Here for a good time says, I want to do a picture frame and put lights behind it. Dude, get a picture frame and put lights behind us and send us those pictures here for a good time. Um, Sean Moneyco says, you, can, you should consider travel with real estate a travel with a real estate convention. Yeah, call our office if you have an idea on that. I guess I don't fully follow you, but it sounds like an awesome idea. Oh, look at that. I'm trying to get that. Just getting that um, blue and that red to separate up on top there is so amazing. I want it to be really separated where each color is too, so. perfect crackled effect up on the surface there. And I think we're getting it. I don't know, can you see it? I don't know if you can even see that with the macro on that 24 year old iPhone that we have there. That's just alcohol with my different colors and then I sprayed a heavy clear over the top. So I'm just trying to get a really layered mixed effect into this really thick clear because that's four and a half gallons of clear casting resin on the surface here. Who thinks I should break all my rules of, sp of spraying and spray a tiny bit of mirror backing spray on there? Oh, I don't know though, look at that, that's clean. That is a good look right there, isn't that? Now, I'm the guy to always tell people never to use spray paints ever, but I wanna try something because this is an art piece. This is not a countertop. So I took some mirror effect spray here for spraying a mirror and I'm gonna encapsulate this as well. do this guys ever that's terrible I teach against it every day but you know what I don't teach against having fun there look at that see that's why we do this do you see how we break it create that spider web effect I don't know if you get if you guys can see that happening the uh, floor was that cold air you were blowing that was cold air I was blowing yes it was so now I just want to mix a little bit of this in Get a real spider webbed effect there. Tell me if you see what's happening here, if you can see that with the on screen there. spray paint and didn't just freak out. I'm loving that blue in there. I want to layer quite a bit of that blue in there. Get it really 3D so when you look at this with the lighting behind it, I want it to really pop. If you think I should just spray this a ton, 
in the next layer or totally leave it alone. Oh, look at that. Laura says I'm not saying anything with the, the lip seal emoji. Laura, here it's yours and mine's secret right now. At least we have a secret. Don't tell Mr. Quest if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm just trying to get some really good marbling in here. You can only get that by really overly stacking the metallic colors together. Like Strox said, knowing when to stop is the hardest part. Dude, kick rocks, I never know when to stop. It's my biggest problem. B and J Customs Printing says, "Holy cow, that is coming out crazy hot! Awesome. That makes me want to go do a pour." Dude, it is fun. B and J, thank you. If you ever just want to have free therapy, you don't want a psychologist making you sit on a couch, buy a little bit of mica powder, some alcohol, some epoxy, and spray it in there and watch what it does. And you'll have so much fun here. You'll forget you ever had a problem. Better than therapy? <laughs> yeah. It's, King Ryan says you're a very talented man. Thank you, King Ryan. Thanks for being on here, King. Hope you're having an awesome day, bro. I'm trying to get a little more of this red. I love that rust effect that's leaving. I don't know what you guys think of it, but I don't want to lose it. I feel like it settles in there pretty easy, and I want it to really stay on top. There, now I think we have to let this settle back there melt all together and it'll leave just it'll kind of just do what it does Laura says she loves the rust I like that rust too Laura I kind of uh, feel like I might Licks be Licks Rocks said they did their entire basement floor and they love it Licks Rocks? Badass send us photos of that I want to see that now remember never touch something like this with a torch with all this alcohol down asking, do you have Italian in your blood? No, but I'm actually bidding quite a few Italian jobs right now in Italy. If you have a property in Italy, it looks like we might be over there to do some floors in a, a flooring class soon. Let's see if I can fade from gold to copper and make kind of a different rest look. Oh yeah, there, that's what... That worked out really well, I think. Have you ever used sound vibration to make patterns? Um, no, I love that idea, though. The, I definitely believe in frequencies. And there's some awesome stuff you can do with that. I've never seen what it does with epoxy, per se. Are you making this for someone, or is this going to be for sale? Um, this is just for the hallway, for the office, for whatevs. This is just a fun, this is what we do here. If you come to a class, this is constantly projects that we'll let you work on. You can pick, pick up the product, pour it in, do whatever you want to do with us. Is that pigment pattern alcohol in this bottle? That is 99% um, um, alcohol mixed with our mica powder pigments. Ever do this? Uh, where are we located? Mirror backing spray. We are in Grand Junction, Colorado. That's the western side of the state. Like I say, don't ever do this. Only really, really badass people can do this. If I ever offend you too, let me know. I joke a lot. Oh, I'm loving it though, right? 
doing what we say don't do. Sometimes it works out just fine, right? I don't know. You tell me what you guys think. I think I better leave it alone. But. Um, April Newman is asking, she said it's the first time I'm here, where does the person get the products and how does it last in the kitchen? April Newman, this does thousands of kitchens, really high-end homes. Every single year, the, the resin we're pouring this art with is also the same resin we just poured a countertop piece with here. Um, it's a very high-grade resin. Um, I would put it up against any epoxy in the world. Um, it's very easy to work with. If you ever are concerned, to attend a class. Classes will get you light years ahead um, and just save you so many little frustrating mistakes, especially if you're wanting to make a business out of this. It's a very profitable thing to do. Um, in a good economy, people love resin and, and it seems to be a really profitable thing just because um, the availability of it. But even in a downturning economy, it seemed like as a contractor, um, um, everybody turns to resin and not knowing how to use it. It's just such a great way to get the same thing done and save a ton of money on your home and sweat equity, get the same results. So thank you guys so much for joining our channel. I hope you guys join us for a class. Um, uh, one more question real quick. Oh, yes. What's the ratio of micro, uh, mica powder to alcohol? Um, usually the mica powder will take a, uh, an empty bottle like this and we'll pour about 10 to 15 um, grams, sometimes 25 if we want it really heavy in there, which that's usually below the lowest line right there of mica powder. And then I'll cut the straw just a little bit short in there so it's not just the, the straw in the bottle. And if you notice how old this is, this is probably a 10 year old bottle because it never, never really ruins the bottles. And so once you have that 10 to 25 grams down in the bottom of powder and you have a little bit shorter of a straw, you can throw a marble in there if you want. And then just fill it up with alcohol to about two thirds. But always leave that last quarter or a third open so you can kind of shake it up and whatnot. And like I say, these hang it up on the wall. These have lasted years and years. It just mica powder and alcohol never goes bad. So thank you so much for joining our channel here today. I hope you had fun. It's still before lunchtime here. So I'm probably gonna come back this afternoon and show you a really fun project we're working on finishing up. And any other questions? Go check out our channel. Please hit the follow button. Um, I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you guys oh, sorry, in Florida. Is there any online, cl uh, online classes? Online classes. We have an awesome YouTube channel, and then of course we have the classes here every month. And then we're our next one's Florida. If you check the link in the bio, and then we have Texas, um, and North Carolina, North Carolina, then Texas, I believe. So look forward to seeing you guys at any of those locations, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you guys so much for joining our live. Turned out beautiful. You picked such good colors. Even the gr that gray, gray is such a boring color.